Wow, got quiet fast. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, we appreciate it. Another big crowd today in a very small room. So thank you for your patience. Uh, we are going to have uh, Chairman Bill Gates from the Board of Supervisors here in Maricopa County. He is going to say a few words and we'll take some questions. I know we had a lot of questions yesterday. Uh, we don't have as much to tell you. Obviously, we'll, uh, we'll have results a little bit later on and we'll talk about that. So with that, Chairman Gates. Thanks, Fields. Uh, good to see everyone again today. Um, happy Veterans Day to all of our veterans out there. As I mentioned yesterday, Veterans Day is a holiday in Maricopa County, but obviously we continue to work here and uh, thrilled to, to be able to move, uh, continue to move through the process. We have several veterans who are involved in the vote counting process here. And so we actually paused today to just recognize all of those veterans who were a part of this. Again, taking their Veterans Day, we know many of them saved democracy and uh, now they're serving democracy today. So we're really thrilled about that. Give you guys an update on uh, what you will be hearing later today in the eight o'clock hour. We will have another vote drop somewhere around 80,000 uh, votes to be reported again, just like last night. And when you figure that in, that'll bring us then below 300,000 uh, ballots that'll be left to tabulate. So again, moving through that in that same fashion that we talked about yesterday. Give you a little bit of information on the ballots that will be reported in that eight o'clock hour we will be reporting a decent amount of the early, the, sorry, the election day votes, those votes uh, that were in-person election day votes, the 17,000, a good amount of those. And then we will also have the remainder of the early votes from before election day. We had a few thousand left. Those should be reported. But the majority of the votes that will be reported this evening are going to be early ballots dropped off on Election Day. So this will be the first report that we have had that include the early, uh, that include the early ballots that were dropped off on Election Day. And then uh, something else very important in the process is the hand count audit. And the hand count audit is going to start tomorrow. Now, the hand count audit is mandated by law. There's been a lot of discussion of that uh, recently, especially in some of the, the other counties around Arizona. Um, this is a very important part of the process. It's required under Arizona law, and this hand, hand count audit allows us to ensure that the machines are operating correctly. This will be a statistically significant amount of ballots that will be involved, and there's two parts of it. First of all, there are the early, uh, the, the, the early ballots, uh, the mail-in ballots, and those have actually been selected. The batches of those have been selected over the past few weeks by the political parties. So that is part of the magic of the hand count audit. It's actually done by representatives of the political parties. So they've been identifying batches. Um, and then also, uh, they, and this, there was a drawing on Wednesday to select the vote centers that are involved in that. And there are five vote centers, I believe. Interestingly, they're all from the West Valley, but these were selected randomly. And we'll be looking at a few races. So it's not a hand count of all the races. It is the governor's race, the um, state representative, uh, and Prop 129, and then I think also Congress, right? Yeah, so U.S. Congress, State Rep, Prop 129, and Governor. Um, so again, this is mandated by law, and uh, we're, we're very confident this is going to go well, but these are three-person boards, okay? So these are representatives of the parties, three-person boards that we will we'll be running through um, starting tomorrow. And that's the last thing that I wanted to say is just a reminder for every, for people who have any concerns about what's going on here today. We have people every day throughout this process, Republicans and Democrats who are participating in it, whether they're actually observers that have been appointed by the county chairs 
or if they are folks who are serving as our poll workers, or they're involved in one of the bipartisan boards, boards. We have Republicans and Democrats working together. And by the way, what I'm finding is they're not sitting there talking about politics, those Republicans and Democrats who are sitting across from one another. They're talking about their families. They're talking about the weather, which is getting pretty good now here in Maricopa County. That's what these people are talking about. So we know that this is a it's it's an exciting time uh, people are very anxious to get the results but these people are committed to moving this process through but while they're doing it they're they might be making a new friend meeting someone from across the aisle which i think we need a little bit more of in this country right now so with that uh, i'll turn it back to you field well not, we'll open it up to questions i'll start on this side of the room today start with vaughn when we're talking about the tuesday ballots that are hand delivered are how many different voting centers are we likely to see that batch coming from? Is it three? Is it 40 of them? What should we expect when we're, you know, when we're all looking at the results and how much we can glean from them tonight? From different ones? Like well, how many, like how many voting centers? I, I think you're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're, you're saying them, like, which batches are in there? Right, are, like should we, when we see these tonight, are these all coming from three Scottsdale voting centers or are they three Glendale ones? I don't know they're if it's coming, yeah. they're, coming from all they're, they're coming from all of them at this point because they've all been uh, separated and now they're now the, the secret ballot. And so they could be in, from any number of votes. So it's a mix of likely all 223 votes. Correct. Oh, or you actually, is that the batching process? Sorry, Megan knows the technical details <laughs> a little bit better. Megan Gilbertson, everybody, communications director here at elections. Um, so is your question about the, the, um, the 17,000? No, the... Uh, the early ballots that were dropped off at the voting centers. So those are randomly come in. So those would be randomly selected. And it, um, as you, I think some of your team uh, came out on uh, election night and were able to come back and see how our team is able to collect all of those ballots. We put them into uh, organized mail trays to get them ready for signature verification. So those come into us like every every other site uh, or like every other day throughout the valley, um, depending on wherever those voters are. So we wouldn't be able to say one location or the other. They're all mixed together. Let me ask I thought that's what you were asking, too. <laughs> what about the precincts, the, the voting center has been chosen for the random hand count? You mentioned those all West Valley, and that was done in random, though? Okay. Did you want me to say that? Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Howie, the, the names of the, the, the selected locations are Flight Goodyear, Journey Church, Estrella Foothills High School, Maryville Bridge and Sabella, Sabia, I think, elementary. Um, so those are the sites that were selected. What happens is the three Maricopa County political party chairs come together and they randomly draw. So we have, we actually use poker chips and each poker chip has the name of a voting location. They're put into a hat and um, each chair gets a chance to draw one out randomly. The law requires them to be randomly selected and that's how we do it here in Maricopa County. So that's what the political party chairs selected on Wednesday. Um, just to follow up on that, can, uh, can you, Go ahead, uh, on the hand audit, can you define what statistically significant means? So it means that there's enough ballots selected in that look in that to ensure that the tabulation equipment uh, is counting ballots accurately. There is a vote count verification committee in the in the state of Arizona that selects that um, margin and is able to ensure that um, the ballots that are counted uh, we'll make sure that the tabulation equipment is counting those ballots accurately. So it's just one more check on the system. But is there like a percentage? Do, so it's 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 like? it's um, by law. So it's one percent of early ballots or five thousand, whichever is fewer. So it, here in Maricopa County, we do five thousand, and then we also do um, two percent of vote centers. Um, and this, because of the, this, there's 223 sites, we're going to do five vote centers, which just is a little bit more than that two percent. If I could ask Mr. Gates about the report that there were 24,000 ballots that the campaigns have been told about that weren't included in the uh, previous summary. Um, they were not found ballots according to our source, but they weren't in that summary and a Cary Lake's campaign is serious and is looking for our counsel. Well, thank you for texting me that. I, I don't know what summary we're talking about, so can you clarify that? 
Yeah, there are 24,000 ballots that were not included to the previous summary. We're told that Maricopa County officials have alerted both Hobbs and Kerry Lake that they weren't found ballots, but there is 24,000 ballots that were not included in that um, summary number. Okay, so I guess a couple different things here. Uh, we're in the middle of the tabulation, and these are campaigns, and obviously they're their candidate is on the ballot, so we don't communicate with the campaigns, or at least Mr. Gates has not, and uh, our elections director has not communicated with the campaigns. So I don't know who has told them anything. We did have um, a couple of days ago, um, it was on Wednesday evening, we had a timing issue. You remember we did a, a drop of uh, results at 6 o'clock-ish, and there were still a number of ballots. I was told it was an estimate around 20,000 that were still in signature verification. So they weren't numbers that were passed along to the communications team that put out a, a media alert. I understand. So you're denying so, that this is true, that they weren't alerted that 24,000 ballots as of today were not included? I'm just saying we didn't do that. I don't know who talked to them. Do, do you want to respond to that at all as a chairman? Yeah, no. I, to clarify, I have not. I reiterate, they're not saying these were found ballots. They're right. Saying, and we know the numbers are shifting. So yes. that's why we just want you to be able to yes. address that. Yes, I have, I have not alerted personally. I have not alerted. I have not been in touch with either of the campaigns. Is it possible that more ballots could have been found, though, just not found? But is it possible that the numbers, since you are still tabulating and getting estimates, even with 17,000, could be fluctuating? Yeah, the, the, um, the, the issue here is, again, at the end of each night, we're informing everyone of what the understanding is as to those ballots that are um, still to be counted. And obviously that does uh, shift based upon what ballots are coming over, what completed ballots, what signature verified ballots are coming over from the recorder's side you of the house. You said informing everyone. Can you clarify who everyone is? Uh, this is in a press release. That's what I mean. When I say informing everyone, there's a press release that comes well, out every evening. Let me address evening. that really quickly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey, yeah, I don't, again, you haven't clarified what report we're talking about or summary was your word. I, I don't know what that summary is. Terms, so a summary number, I, it feels like it's a well, we summarize some. I mean, have you guys all seen the press release that uh, Megan is kind enough to work on every night? Uh, yeah, we do this for your benefit so you know approximately what we're still looking at and what we're uh, working on in the interest of transparency. As I said, we were informed that our number that we released on Wednesday night, there were still ballots going through the signature verification process that hadn't been in the final total we were given. And, uh, and therefore, we corrected that last night. So I don't know if that, if we were told it was around 20,000. I don't know if that's the 24,000 you're talking about. We have not communicated with the and campaign. And you have not heard from the Lake campaign that she wants an accounting or she is upset or curious. Mr. Gates just said he hasn't communicated yeah. with them, and neither have I. I know you haven't communicated. But you can you ask about timing something? for the rest of the week? So you guys sure. are getting through 80,000 and 90. Correct. Thank you. You said you've got 300,000 left. So at that, are you planning to stay on that pace through the weekend? I know you're going to keep counting through the weekend. Originally, the, we were hoping for most of them to be done by Friday. Obviously, you said yesterday that was moving. Do you have a new timeline that we're looking at Monday? <laughs> Well, I think Not we were—I think we were pretty that clear that about that yesterday. We yeah. uh, released a, it was a little bit over eighty thousand, or a little yeah. bit under eighty thousand yesterday. I'm sorry. <laughs> so in the eighty thousand range yesterday, might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less, but uh, you can do the math on that to get to the four hundred thousand we announced yesterday. That would be five days. And then I have another one, um, which I think you're going to tell me based on my colleague's question. You can't answer, but is there a way to? Are, are you guys saying? How many of the remaining votes are left to be counted from each of the state Senate districts within Maricopa? Is that breakdown somewhere, or is that not? How many ballots are left to no. from each of the Senate? Now we can't break. We're not that that's 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 All right. Can you just clarify about the seventeen thousand votes? You guys will be releasing all the results tonight, or some of the. Yeah, most of those votes are included in the count that will come out tonight. Yes. And then, can you confirm that seventeen thousand number? Because some campaigns are saying that that number might be underestimated. That is incorrect. Okay. So there's a maximum that it could be, 17,140. This is based on the number of people that checked in to the vote centers. And uh, then we know how many went through the vote center tabulators, and we have 17,140. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to have that many ballots, actually, because some people check in, and then they realize they left the stove on and they leave. So uh, they, then they don't complete their ballot. So, you know, that's the maximum it could be based on those numbers of check-ins, so. Okay? Go ahead, Jason. I'll get you guys next.
Press, uh, reporter Richard, some of your people, and, and your thoughts on it. Just explain what's still going on, and you just kind of comment on, on what you were seeing in the last couple of days as far as anything directed to you or any of the election officials are working. No, thanks for asking that. I mean, I, again, the, the, the crew here is focused on getting through this count. Um, I, no one's getting distracted by it, and unfortunately, it's sort of a way of life for people in elections and elections officials, but there's not anything in particular that I would point to, uh, sadly, out of the ordinary, and again, just uh, so proud of this group behind us and what they're getting done and moving forward. Again, a historic number uh, of early ballots that were dropped off on Election Day. Well, let me ask you a question. Uh, certain Republican gubernatorial candidate who remain unnamed um, is talking about going back to hand counts and precinct voting and same day. How realistic is it in a county this size? How many precincts would you need? How many people would you need? Or is this just a pipe dream? Well, Howie, as I've said before, this board recognizes, acknowledges that the responsibility for setting the rules of the road for elections or with the state legislature. You know that as well as anyone. Um, I believe that we have found running the vote centers that they have been uh, very efficient. I think the people of Maricopa County have appreciated the opportunity to go to any one of 223 vote centers. Uh, quite frankly, with some of the challenge, when a challenge occurs at a particular center, um, you can go to another one. And we had that happen on Tuesday, and we've certainly had that happen in other elections. If you do precinct-based voting, uh, then, and if it's closed, or if there's an issue there, that's it. Uh, you can't go anywhere else. So I think we've found that these are very convenient, and they're very efficient. People have already grown used to them, and uh, we'll have to see what the state, if, if any individual state legislators would like, you know, to have my opinion, I'd be happy to talk to them about it goes, that. It goes beyond the precinct voting. It goes to the idea that if you had enough small oh. precincts, you could do yep. hand counts there. Yep. You wouldn't need the equipment back here. You wouldn't need the questions about the alignments and whether Hugo Chavez has risen from his grave in Venezuela <laughs> to, to, to adjust things. You know, can you, would it be feasible to do small precinct based voting and actually have hand counts at those precincts? Again, I think that these these precincts are the number of precincts that you would have to have uh, are very, very challenging. Look, here's the reality, sadly, because uh, the discourse has become so uh, charged, there's a lot of the places that used to host precincts that don't want to anymore. A lot of the schools, a lot of the churches. So I'm not even sure if there's the locations to be able to do that. Um, and so I think you end up having to do some kind of centralized uh, uh, precincts or centralized vote centers anyway. Now you're bringing the, uh, if you're trying to do the hand count in a centralized fashion, our uh, elections director, Scott Jarrett, testified in the Lake v. Hobbs lawsuit that that would require 25,000 people to do the hand count. So uh, again, it's up to them, but I think that it's not realistic, it's not efficient, and there is no reason to go in that direction because these machines have been shown over and over again to do an excellent job. And as we're talking about the hand count audit, if there's an issue with the machines, we would pick it up in these hand count audits. And the last several hand count audits have not shown any discrepancies between the hand count and the machine count. Let's, use let's go a, here first. You said a second ago, just for those of us doing back of the envelope math, you said there's a few thousand ballots that were mail-in ballots received prior to election day. Can you be any more specific about that number? I, yeah, again, that, that number is below 10,000. Okay. Yeah, it's roughly in that area. Uh, hi, uh, Nina Snow from the AP. Um, as you know, there's a lot of sort of suspicions whirling around on social media, and there was one particular, I don't know if you've seen this, but I guess Megan's seen it. I think Megan's seen it if she's had time. But there's a video out of, uh, by a conservative pundit um, about um, showing the Penske trucks leaving this location and then going to the location on uh, 2800 East 36th Street. Can you tell us what 
that is. I mean, he was sort of speculating all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and I believe that's going. Do you want to take that, Megan? <laughs> Well, I haven't seen that exact video, but what I can tell you that what our warehouse team is doing right now is they're going out to all of our 223 voting locations, getting the voting booths, the chairs, the tables, anything that was uh, you know left that wasn't brought back here on election night, we brought back on election night all of the memory cards, the ballots, and other uh, sensitive election materials. Um, so those those teams are going out to all those sites right now, retrieving that um, those materials and bringing them back here to the elections. Department. This, the truck was going from here to there. That's what would happen because the trucks start here at the elections department where our staff is, goes out to those sites, and then comes right no, back. It went from here to that site. It went here, from here to the warehouse. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what here to the warehouse means. From here, the tabulation center to the warehouse at 2800 East 36th Street. Great. Well, let's have a conversation about that again offline, and we, okay. you can let me know. Um, these trucks are rented, and so maybe that's the, where it belongs and where it lives. Oh, I don't know, because I, I, I wasn't sure if, like, if they're scanned there and they're brought back, or they're scanned here and they're taken there to be warehouse. Or... Those are great questions. So let's talk about it once okay. I see that video. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Nicole. Uh, question about the on-demand printers, kind of tracking where they come from. Um, so run back. Who I guess the county told us that's where they come from. They say that the on-demand printers. The faulty ones did not come from them and that they haven't given any recommendations on printer settings this year. So I'm just trying to figure out why there's kind of different statements coming from both. Okay. I'm not aware of what Runback has said publicly today. Do, do you have anything more to add? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to hear. Yeah, no, thanks for the, the question about Runback. And I actually just talked with Jeff Runbeck maybe within the last hour and just making sure that, that we, you know, understand what one another is, what, what the facts are in the situation, and we'll be coming out with a statement on that soon. So, so. the printers come from Runbeck? So um, that we will have a statement out on that soon, but those, my understanding is we did not purchase those from Runbeck. But... Yeah, if you want it, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, um, and I shared this with you earlier today, Nicole. Um, the All of the printers, the ballot on demand printers, were purchased with our partners, uh, Runbeck, um, including the software, firmware, and all of the retrofitting that it takes to um, take a commercial off the shelf printer and make it into the ballot on demand printer to be able to serve voters in Maricopa County. We had 12,000 different ballot styles and that's what those types of printers do. So they are purchased um, with them and um, while they're not manufactured by Runbeck, they're uh, commercial off the shelf printers. Um, we do work very closely together and I think that's what the chairman was saying is um, when he was speaking with Jeff Ellington today, um, they, uh, you know, we are uh, in partnership with them and they supported us through this whole process and so we're grateful for that. Okay, but they did So I think that's a great question to go back and get clarification because I didn't, that's not what they shared with us, so. But while you're here, it sounds like you're saying you purchased it, the printers from Runback, but they may have been manufactured by a third party. So we use uh, Lexmark printers and Oki printers, right? So Runbeck is not the manufacturer of the printer, but the, ba the ballot on demand technology, and they help us retrofit all of the printers uh, to become ballot on demand printers. Wait a second, Dana. Let's go back here. Um, forgive me if this has come up before, but I just want to clarify. Had there been any um, concerns raised with either campaign or any party ahead of election day about the toner and the printer? Had there anyone raised any flag ahead of time or reached out with concern? This is not something I'm aware of, but uh, I'm looking behind me to see if anybody else has anything raised. Not something we're aware of. I'm sorry. Hi. Go ahead, Nina. Uh, JJ wants to know how many of <laughs> how many of tonight's uh, report will be election day drop-offs. Will be election day drop-offs. The majority of them tonight the will be election day drop-offs. More than fifty percent. We don't Correct. have a number. But I guess we don't have a number. No. Because they're still working. Yeah. Have, feel, have have any of the campaigns come to you guys with any allegations of fraud or irregularities? Not. Not that I'm aware of, no. 
Will you guys be Hang on a second. She had a question. Yeah, sorry. Just clarification. Do you guys have an estimate time as to where next, when next week you guys will be taking off this 95 to 90, 99% that was promised this week? So, um, yeah, I, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, again, I, I, w I just want to be clear. It wasn't promised, but that was our best estimate, that we would have 95 to 99 percent. And as we have explained, uh, we had the, you know, we broke the record, the all-time record by 70 percent of the number of in-person or the early ballots dropped off on Election Day. So based upon that, we would estimate that we would reach that 95 to 99 percent number early next week. Fair I don't I would say I would say either one of those days is a possibility. And just a little bit of a, a housekeeping question here. Uh, I know you all are going to be working throughout the weekend. Can we expect to see press conferences and more information on the weekend as well to update people in Maricopa County? We will update you on that. Uh, as soon as we've made a decision. Yes. All right, uh, thanks for doing this. Just to clarify, uh, you said the majority of the ballots released tonight will be those uh, election day drop offs. Is it true, will the majority of the ballots in the coming days also be as part of those same batch of election day drop-offs? Like, will those be the same ballots tomorrow and the next day, et cetera? Yes, the majority of the ballots moving forward will definitely be early, uh, election day drop-off, or early ballots dropped off on election day. Anything further? Got one down here. Uh, the former president continues to say that there are issues with the election. Have you yet to hear from him directly? I have not heard um, from former President Trump, and as far as I know, no one on the Board of Supervisors has heard from him in relation to this election. I guess not. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, Bianca. Thanks. Um, this may be a better question for Stephen Richard, but maybe you can um, add some color to it. Comparing the early days received on Election Day to, let's say, 2020, 2018, at this point in the counting process, were you, were you guys typically finished with tabulation, or how long was that process going to be given? Well, I, I would say no, we were not. And I actually think, Stephen, and we can get you guys more yeah, specifics on that. He, uh, Fields answered it yesterday, but I think there was an article in the Arizona Republic today talking about uh, elections in 2018. 2020 that went until you know like Wednesday of the week following uh, following ele election day for a winner to be declared so again and I've shared my story from 2006 about sitting out on those steps for several days that's again for folks who followed Arizona politics for many years this is very very common and primarily the reason it goes until Wednesday let's say is because of those early Absolutely. That's what elongates it the most. But then also, you know, we have laws that allow people five business days to cure uh, either a signature or uh, their ID. If they don't have ID, they can vote a conditional provisional ballot. They have five business days to come and present the identification. So that, for us, that takes us through Wednesday, right? Wednesday of next week. So again, this is very common. I know people are very anxious to get the results, but there's nothing out of the ordinary here. And the reason that, again, we love having you guys all here, the reason you're here is because these races are so close. So question just following uh, up on that, because one of the candidates did mention that this is taking too long um, and that once they were in office, they were going to try to make uh, fixes to this. Do you think that they could at any point change the uh, allowing the early ballots the day of elections? And just they certainly have the authority to do that, but I want to be very clear. I'm not calling on the state legislature to do that. I, I respect the state legislature's uh, decision, whatever they make on that. You can make arguments both for doing it on Election Day or saying you can only do it up until Friday of the week before. All that we want to do here at Maricopa County, and we were focused on this, was educating people. We were doing those press conferences every week to let people know the more people that drop off late earlies, uh, the longer this process is going to take. That's fine. It's consistent with the law. But I think that it's unfair for people to criticize Maricopa County for following the law and making sure that only eligible voters votes are counted. And, and, hang on a second. And so just for you guys, I, I mentioned this. I was asked this exact same thing. Hi. 
we were asked this uh, yesterday, and it was the average is 10 to 12 days for most elections for everything to be wrapped up. And, and, uh, and then, the, of course, the canvas is within here, here, 20 days here, after Arizona, the election. Here, so here in Maricopa County, 10 to 12 yeah. days, it generally takes us to count all the ballots. So, and Bill, that raises an interesting question. Since we've been doing it for this long, for this many years, you have somebody who has covered politics and elections running for governor for this many years. Is there some reason you think she doesn't know? Or why do you think she's saying it's never taken this long? I know. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying yeah. to get it. I am not. Something. I'm not. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not going to speculate on this. But I would find it interesting, Howie. I don't think I've heard one state legislator criticize, now I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but I don't think I've heard a state legislator criticize Maricopa County for the pace of this because they passed the law. They know they put it in place. And again, there's a lot of value to that. So if there's any questions, let me be clear. I'm not calling on the state legislature to change this process. I just want everyone to be honest about why it's taking the time that it is. And so to see, you know, national networks out there and their hosts saying, not being truthful about why it's taking this period of time, that's frustrating to these people back here who are doing an incredible job working through Veterans Day weekend and then to have that spread out there nationally to raise quite, you know what, yeah, I'm going to stand up for my state. I am going to stand up for my state. Maybe not everyone here is, but I am. We're doing things the right way. And I appreciate that you're all here, but we're not doing anything wrong at all. And that someone from here would suggest that we are doing something wrong, that's frustrating. Okay, you got me a little bit there. <laughs> that might lead to more questions. We're almost done. <laughs> Nicole? I the numbers left to count. I thought you said 330, but the last update from the press release was 340 to 350. I'm just trying to be as... Accurate as possible. <laughs> I did not. I did, I did not. I did he not. He said say less than less than three hundred is where we'll be. So it's less than after this. After, after the drop after tonight. Votes are dropped. Correct. Yeah. 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 It'll yes. be in the eight p.m. hour. Yes. <laughs> Any other logistical questions? <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, uh, Chairman Gates has, has answered that before, but um, it's been relatively well behaved lately. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate you asking the question because certainly earlier on in this, a few weeks ago, we spoke, the recorder and I spoke very strongly about things that were going on, some harassment, frankly, to elections workers uh, and some voters, and folks have been very well behaved. I haven't heard any report to that. So I want to thank the people of Maricopa County. It's been very quiet out here. That's excellent. I think we're showing, I think we're showing our best uh, to the world here. And I have no doubt we're going to continue to do that. I have no doubt that people are going to be patient for these results to come out. And, but having said all that, man, these guys are working long hours. These guys and gals are working long hours. And the last thing that they deserve when they come out after a long day is somebody to stick a camera in their face uh, or yell something. And we haven't heard that at all. So thank you, <laughs> Maricopa County. And that was something we did see during the primary. And yeah. that kind of led to a lot of our reactions this time. Uh, we'll take one more question since you guys have uh, I'm seeing fewer hands. Pretty silent, like you guys mentioned, following up on a we remember what happened outside here in 2020. Let's say the votes are counted and maybe it doesn't go in favor of the president. Um, are you guys preparing additional security for what might happen outside? It also ha uh, expects for an announcement from Donald Trump to announce his 2024 campaign. So <coughs> they're going to happen kind of at the same time if a specific candidate loses. So <laughs> are you guys expecting that? I, I think we've spoken yeah. with the sheriff many times, yeah. and the chairman yeah. can elaborate on that. Yeah, and I would just say very simply, yeah, that the sheriff, we have spoken with sheriff, local law enforcement, federal partners, and the bottom line is we're prepared for everything. All right, thank you, everybody. We're going to have some discussions on um, our press availability throughout the weekend, and uh, a lot of uh, folks have already asked, so uh, we'll get to you very soon on that. All right? Mm -hmm.